Uh, hello, everyone. Uh, my name is Shi Yang, and uh, my colleagues here, he's from, uh, he's Yu Xiang Zhu, we both from Beijing office. So today's topic is about uh, continuous delivery meets OpenShift. Uh, if you are a developer, um, I think you must be familiar with the CI, CD, and maybe OpenShift. So today, uh, we want to talk about more about at Red Hat, how we use the continual delivery plus uh, OpenShift. And the presentation will be split into two parts. First part, I want to talk a little bit more about the, before we move in the, to the all in the OpenShift, uh, what's the problem we had? And the second part, my colleague Yu Xiang, he's from PNT DevOps. He will talk a little bit more about the, how did we solve the problem. So without any further ado, we can just jump into the problem. There's two major problems. Uh, I will break it down like uh, into different perspective. So the first one is more related to the environments. So in a traditional environment, a bug cannot be reproduced really e easily for some uh, historical reasons, like some of our internal projects at Red Hat. It's a little bit hard to keep uh, dev and QE and the stage and the production environment similar. So here's a story. There's a developer, he made some code change Maybe it's a feature implementation. He write the unit test, function test, integration test, um, compile, pass the CI, CD, and then he released. Then comes to the quality engineer's responsibility. He just fetched the release from maybe RPM or something, but unfortunately, he found a bug. That's a little bit sad. But since the precondition, I mentioned before, since the de developers and the QEs, they're not using or sharing the same environments. Their environments are different. When the QE submit a bug, maybe on Bugzilla or something, it's hard to reproduce for developers. This could be a severe problem. Sometimes it may took like a couple, of four or five days back and forth. They QE and developer collaborate together to troubleshooting and figure out whether the issue is related to the environment or code change. So here comes the second one. The traditional environments are hard to clone, provide, rebuild, more, or even deliver the same or same environment or mirror environment really easily. So your customer may want to clone your environment for test. You may wa want also like clone all the service dependency, which I will talk a little bit later, of your project to the other teams. And in an extremely condition, like what if your like environment lost due to the hardware failure? Is there any easy way to, for you to rebuild? So previously, some of the team, they had a really like long documentation, TDS for step one, two, three, four, five to uh, you know, help you to how to rebuild the environment or clone or uh, set up the correct environment. Some teams, even better, they automate it with like scripting, like uh, automation tools, but like, each team like reinvent the wheel, this is not really good. And even like there's a high level, you know, uh, decision make, like make all those tools consolidate into one. Sometimes that tool is really hard for like each team to fit their, everybody's need. So is there any more genetic way to solve this problem even without like writing any tools or codes? So the third environment <coughs> problem is some traditional environments sometimes lowering the performance and resource utilization. So many of your team or projects, 
may already have the you know, pipeline for uh, CI, and some, uh, some of the CI may be a Jenkins. Uh, due to some reason, you might have some uh, fixed numbers of uh, slaves, and this is not really flexible sometimes, and if you want to run, uh, let's say, a, a destructive case, uh, maybe your slave is a VM, and you have to wait the previous guy to finish up their task and recovering the whole environment in, so that you can uh, occupy the machine. But ideally, we want to, at Red Hat, we want to like, use each machine as much as possible. Like, you can run multiple jobs in one machine, it's VM or bare metal, as uh, simultaneously pa parallelize and use the resource as less as possible. So the second problems I want to talk is more about the service dependencies. When I said service, service dependency, I didn't mean the OpenShift service or how good you feel about the waiter or waitress serves you last night. And when I say the service dependencies, I mean the microservice, which uh, is a kind of best, best practice for you to deploy your uh, application in a cloud-native way. So imagine there's a huge company, and when your project's getting bigger and bigger, there's a lot of increasing microservice. Your service depends on service of someone else. Someone else service maybe depends on yours. How do you make sure an upgrade of the service will not break the others? Let me just uh, like, uh, explain it more simpler. Maybe we have a downstream and an upstream, like uh, two teams. They, one is working on downstream, and another working on the upstream. You can also consider it as a two service dependencies. So they are both pretty productive. They like making code change pretty frequently, maybe every day, couple minutes and hours. But due to the system complexity and a lot of like interleaved uh, server dependencies, the, the release, sometimes it could be really hard because you have to make sure all those components, all those dependencies pass the CI and have to, it's a, complicated release process, and it usually sometimes took four or five days. This difference sometimes could make like, your code change will accumulate like four or five days, so that each release will like accumulate a lot of code change. This is not really good, and sometimes it's a high like risking task, because according to the philosophy or best practice of uh, continuous delivery. We want to each time like uh, push the, make the codes as small as possible so that you can isolate the problem and troubleshooting more easily. And the second one, we want to release uh, the code or make the release as frequent as possible, even every minute, so you can travel and find, roll out and find the problem as soon as possible. So with all those problems we had, how do you solve it? My colleague Yu Xiangzhu, he will talk a little bit more about how the PNT DevOps way solved this problem uh, at, from the Red Hat. Uh, thanks, Shiyang. So, in Red Hat, I want to share you some uh, experience in Red Hat about how we use the development practice of continuous <laughs> delivery on OpenShift to solve all the problems Shiyang just mentioned. <laughs> So before we talk about the, the concept of continuous delivery, let's think about uh, uh, the concept of continuous integration or just the CI. I think 
Uh, most of you probably already heard this term, or probably your team already have uh, has some CI pipelines working every day. So let's recall the days without CI. So in the old days, some developer teams had a, a role, some people called it the build person. So you have a development team and maybe uh, five or more de developers working on a project. So when the, your manager asks you to release a new version, the build person should uh, get someone's work, uh, get the work from somebody and uh, another people, the files from another people, and uh, he gather all the files from all developers and mix it up. And hopefully, the mix, uh, the shared code base will build and uh, works. So if anything goes wrong, you probably need to take a very long time to figure out what's going wrong. So it's a, a slow uh, procedure. It may take several weeks before you can actually get your build uh, success. So with continuous integration, we require every developer to integrate their uh, change to the source code to a shared repository as, uh, as soon as possible, maybe several times a day. This ensures that this will encourage the developer to uh, make little change to the source code and they test with the whole project. So if anything goes wrong, you can easily figure out what's the problem and you can easily fix it. So that's the idea of continuous integration. But the problem is even though with CI, your shared source code is buildable and even, even works perfectly in developers or in workstation or even in the development environment. Nobody has the confidence that oh, it will be fine if you really put your new version of your software into production environment. So the developers always eager to deploy their new feature to the production environment, but operator guys, they maybe not happy because nobody knows what we are having. So now the continuous delivery, the concept comes into the play. So continuous delivery is a, also a development practice, an uh, extension to the concept of CI, which requires developers to rapidly um, deliver their change to a production-like environment and make some automated tests to ensure that if we uh, deploy the new version of the software into the real production, so it will be fine. So here I want to make a clean distinguish between two very similar terms. One is called a continuous delivery, another is continuous deployment. So in continuous deployment, every change from a developer will be constantly deploy, deployed into production automatically. So in some internet companies like Facebook, they already like uh, put a continuous deployment in practice uh, for a long time. But in continuous delivery, we can actually do it, but we may choose not to. It's more like a business decision. So we, we can deploy our shared code base into the production if we want, but we may choose not to. So that's the difference of between continuous delivery or continuous deployment. So, 
how to implement continuous delivery. So I would say the ingredient of continuous delivery is automation. So basically, you need to automate everything you can imagine. So you need automated build, automated test, all the script like to deploy your application into different environment and uh, automatically do the configuration, uh, set up database and pro provision machine, everything. So it's a lot of work and it's actually not easy to automate everything. So, but today we have OpenShift. So the following section I will introduce you some features, some advantages that OpenShift will bring you to help you implement your continuous delivery pipelines. So in OpenShift, your application is run, shaped, and managed in the forms of containers or container images. So the container image has your program and all the dependencies, the file system in the image. So you can actually minimize the difference between different environments and the different deployments. And OpenShift has a feature called OpenShift template. So with OpenShift template, you can actually write a template for all your environments. People from other team, or if they want to like uh, clone your environment, they can just uh, uh, run, use your OpenShift template to start a new deployment with, uh, your, with the exactly same configuration, just like a one click. And you can also leverage the, all the hardware resource of the whole cluster. So you need, don't need to worry about the hardware, don't need to worry about provisional machine or up, upgrade your hardware configuration. It's all uh, in an automa automatic way. So the most exciting thing is OpenShift has a feature called OpenShift Pipeline which can help you imply, implement your CD pipelines in a manageable and a fancy way. So this is the OpenShift pipeline. So it, OpenShift pipeline is actually something that brings the power of Jenkins into OpenShift. So Jenkins is a very powerful CI/CD tool, and it uh, has a, a feature called the Jenkins pipeline, which allows you to write your pipeline code in a text file called Jenkins file. And OpenShift extends this technology by providing you a new domain-specific language, so you can, uh, in your Jenkins file, you can write some Groovy, uh, in Groovy language, you can just write, write the OpenShift DSL to in, interact your pipeline code with the OpenShift API server. And once you create a new OpenShift pipeline job, a uh, Jenks job will be automatically created and linked to the OpenShift job. So it has a built-in synchronization mechanism. So here's a real example in Red Hat. So we implemented a CD pipeline for WeaverDB. So it's an open source project hosted um, Pagger if you're interested in the CD pipeline implementation, you can go to pager.io, search for WeaverDB. So here's the high level workflow of the CD pipeline. So every time a developer submit a change to a SEM, so the change will go through the 
full pipeline. So the pipeline will firstly perform some basic, uh, basic checks and uh, run unit tests to ensure your code is, uh, your code looks good. And then maybe build RPMs, run RPM checks, <coughs> and finally, the pipeline will build a container image for you from, from the source code. Then the image will be deployed into a temporary environment, and we will run some functional tests and other some high-level tests to it. If all tests are passed, we will tag the image as latest and push into the container registry. So, um, When the image is tagged as latest, we will see, uh, we have the confidence that the image is good enough to deploy into a de development environment. So the next steps are actually promote this container image into the stage environment, and finally the production environment. It does so by like if you want to promote an image from the dev version to the stage version, we need to like pull the latest, uh, uh, the dev version of your application and all the stage version of uh, your application's dependencies. Then we will run some end-to-end -end test and the as a high level integration test to ensure that once you promote your image from dev to stage, everything, you, won't break, uh, you won't break anything. So, similar procedure happens when you promote the image from stage into production. But we introduce a, a switch here. So, a human can decide if you really want to promote the stage uh, image to production. If you remove this switch, it's called a continuous deployment. But if you add this switch, it's continuous delivery. Uh, this is how the pipeline looks like in the OpenShift dashboard. Uh, if you create an uh, OpenShift pipeline job, and click the Build Pipeline button, you will see all the pipeline jobs. And click into a pipeline job, you can see the all stages in your pipeline here, like this. So now, how to write your own OpenShift pipeline? Here is the so we need to introduce the Jenks file first. So Jenks file is basically a text file written in the Groovy programming language. It's a feature provided by Jenkins. So, um, so you can create a text file, write a code like this. The agent part specifies which node you want to run your pipeline. And in the stages part, you define different stages in your pipeline. And in every stage, you can write some query source code to, uh, for your pipeline workflow. And in OpenShift, you can actually create a build config. But Set the build strategy to Jenkins pipeline strategy. And then you can put your Jenkins file here. So you can, you have two, actually you have two options. One option is copy your content of Jenkins file into the build config object. The other option is store your Jenkins file into SEM like GitHub, and then you reference your Jenks file from an external Git repo. 
So here I have an example, build config, and uh, you can download my slides and uh, take a look. Can you, if you have a running OpenShift cluster, you can up, um, add the, the YAML file to your OpenShift cluster and uh, click the build button. Let's see how it works. So this is the this is the YAML file. So you can see we include a JAX file here, and we define the agent. The agent is actually a pod template of OpenShift. So the metadata part is the name of your uh, OpenShift pipeline job. And here you define the pod template. So your pipeline will be run in a pod on OpenShift. Uh, this feature is, intro is supported by a Jenkins plugin. Then you can add this build config to OpenShift. And here in the OpenShift dashboard, you can see a job is created like this. And you can click the button start pipeline or use your command line or say start build the pipeline job name to start a new build of your OpenShift pipeline job. And here a new build is started. When you click the view log button, OpenShift will navigate you to the Jenks master page, so you can see the procedure of how your pipeline runs in Jenkins. So you can see OpenShift will automatically start a new part based on the pod template you pro provided and run all the steps inside your OpenShift pod. And go back to the OpenShift dashboard, you can see all the steps here. So because your OpenShift pipeline job is, is configured in an OpenShift object in the form of a YAML or JSON, so you can actually use OpenShift template to like package your pipeline jobs as OpenShift applications. With this approach, you will give the flexibility to your team members or downstream developers to deploy their own pipeline jobs for, the, for their application folks. Uh, so with OpenShift pipeline, you can, every time you trigger a new build of your job, a new, a new pod will be created and provisioned. So you can actually run your pipeline multiple builds in parallel. So you don't need to worry about if someone is occupying that machine. So when you have a very long and a complex pipeline, this will dramatically speed up your development cycle. And with this approach, all your pipeline code, secrets, and the whole build environment are persisted in SEM. 
So you don't need to worry about um, how a failure will cause you lose uh, your uh, build and test environment. So you can store your OpenShift uh, pipeline job as build config YAMLs in SCM. And your credentials can be persisted as OpenShift secrets. So um, you can create an open general OpenShift secret with this tag. So the secret will be automatically synced to the Jenkins master. So you don't need to uh, like back up your data on the Jenkins master. All you need is like keep your YAML files and you will have everything. So let's just let me summarize the, all the benefits we have with OpenShift pipeline. So it, you can actually use OpenShift pipeline DSL to interact with OpenShift API server without calling the OC command and pass the output manually. And you can use the Kubernetes plugin to run your pipeline Jenkins sleeves as OpenShift pods, so you don't need to worry about uh, provision a new machine to run your pipeline. And you can actually define some OpenShift templates for all environments of your application, and you don't need to worry about the environment could be destroyed or be lost. So that's how we talk about the, the question Q and A time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. Uh, Thank you, guys. Thank you, guys. Bye -bye. So if you guys have have any questions, you can just uh, ask it here. Please. Can we use GitLab instead of Jenkins, for example? Uh, for uh, pipelines. Skip. Can we use GitLab instead of Jenkins? Uh, you mean the Git? Git. GitLab. 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 So actually, the this feature is highly integrated with Jenkins. So every time you create a new build config, the OpenShift will automatically create a, a Jinx job in the linked Jinx master. So by so far, so the pipeline is actually running in Jenkins, yeah, and the Jenkins is running as OpenShift pod. So your question is about uh, do, do, do I know do we know how the uh, pipeline works between different namespaces or projects? Projects. Yeah. So good. Uh, I think in your first one of your slides you had Python that showed using different stages. So yeah. Okay, so your question is how to, if you have many projects, so how you like deal with this situation? Right. So, uh, so actually when you, the, the OpenShift build config is a namespace the resource. So when you create a pipeline in a project, OpenShift will look, will look for a service called Jenkins 
in, inside your project. So if you already define a service, uh, define an OpenShift service in your project, so it will find the Jenkins master using the uh, the back uh, the back points of the service. So if you have a, a Jenkins master, but in every project you ha mm, you have a service in inside every project, but there are, the service is linked is linked to a uh, the same Jenkins master, the, jo the job will be created in that Jenkins master. But you can also have different Jenkins masters. So it, OpenShift does it just like a look, uh, looks for the uh, OpenShift service called Jenkins by the Jenkins master. <laughs> Please. So the question is, in the promotion workflow, if we like push the image to the dev, how to trigger the next stage? So currently, uh, we have uh, in our internal project we have a microservice called Report Tracker, which will track the registry tag change. So if there's a new tag change, uh, the like the latest tag is changed to another container image, we will know that and we will set up trigger to trigger the next stage. Yeah, please. Okay. Where is the BT trigger? For instance, the result of the test. Result of the test? Result of the test stage. Hmm? Where, where they are kept? Where they are kept? Uh, so your question is, uh, where we keep the test log and other results? Yeah. So it's actually the logs are still in Jenkins. So it's still in Jenkins. And the Jenkins master, so in the the, the Jenkins slave is uh, ephemeral, so when the job, when, when our build is finished, the slave will be killed, right? But the Jenkins master has a persistent storage config, so the, everything on Jenkins master is actually persistent. So you, actually you need to use the, in Jenkins there, in Jenkins pipeline there is a step called archive uh, something to like move to copy the content in your Jenkins slave into master. But, but master is also part. Yeah, master is also part, but we, in OpenShift, you can create a persistent cl uh, storage claim so, and mount, it, mount the storage, mount the volume into Jenkins. So actually, uh, uh, the, all the files are persisted in the persistent volume. So if you kill the Jenkins master, OpenShift will start a new part for the Jen new Jenkins master, but it will still mount the same storage. So everything is still 
uh, if they are kept. You mean the two stages once they is finished? Yeah, the uh, in the Jenkins in the Jenkins pipeline, uh, let me find something. So, so in, you can, this is taken from the official Jenkins pipeline documentation. So in Jenkins pipeline, if you write stages like in the stage section, stage one, stage two, this is called uh, sequential stages. So once the first stage is done, it, Jenkins will automatically start the next stage. And uh, there's another form of stages called a parallel stage. So you can actually define multiple stages. They are started uh, concurrently. So, so what we're seeing is the automation the controller here. So, the, yeah, yeah, yeah. It's, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Please. Troubleshooting. So the question is, if uh, so, the pipeline and the deployment, like applications, are running in OpenShift pod. And sometimes your job fails and the pod is killed. How do you troubleshoot? Do some troubleshooting. So in so there are, are many ways to do that. Mm. So firstly, uh, in your Jenkins pipeline, actually you can write uh, logs to the to the Jenkins console. So if in most situations you can actually figure out what's going wrong based on the logs. So um, and the other tricks like you can. Can actually, for example, if if you want you don't want the Jenkins slave to be killed, you can actually add some. Uh, so when you find a, a pipeline build is failed, you can use the replay functionality in Jenkins to rerun the build with the exactly same parameters, and you can actually. Change, uh, change the pipeline code on the uh, Jenkins configuration page and add something like a sleep to keep the pod uh, running. Uh, 
，我不知道该怎么答这个问题，因为这个很创造重点这个问题太复杂了，我不知道具体是什么东西。对，但是我觉得应该不是指那个 application 挂了，应该是指 pipeline 挂了，我也不太清楚。And also, I want to add one more one, like, like application part or no, the other part. There's a, I'm from the CLI, CLI guy, so I know there's a OC debug command which you can use a little bit if it helps. And there's also a lot of great yeah. CLI tool for you to debug. Yeah, she and just the mission that the um, yeah. OpenShift provided a tool to help you debug some problems inside OpenShift, but uh, it's a more generic uh, topic. <laughs> yeah. uh, Thank you very much. Thank you, all the questions.